Welcome back, everybody. Of course, you know me. My name is Dr. Keith McNally. This is Coach's Corner. I'm here with Michelle Ann Collins, and she is a coach, a very special coach. She's a grief and wellness coach. Grief and wellness coach. I was a wellness coach before I was a grief coach, so I didn't want to drop the wellness tag yet. <laughs> I love it, but you're, you are a grief coach specifically because you lost your husband to suicide. Now, I'm going to put the... The link to that conversation because you were in the question guy podcast and we had that conversation but because of that experience you had to do a lot of rethinking about life and that brought you into a place where you can now help others and you wrote some books about it too and so let's dive into I that did. conversation and let's find out how you help people let's get started all right thanks so much um so i as you said, lost my husband to suicide. That was 2016. And after some very dark and difficult times, I was already a yoga therapist and wellness coach when he died. And so I had these skills. Um, both of both of those things can really help with healing. But what I realized was I wasn't able to use my tools, I had to reach out for help from external sources because I was in such a dark place. And once I was feeling better and on my feet again, I realized that I was able to help others through what I learned through, I ended up in trauma therapy because I developed PTSD and I learned so much. And I was able to integrate that into my yoga therapy practice and my wellness coaching practice. And then I got a grief educator certification and, and grief yoga certification as well. And so I was able to start doing grief coaching. So it's a combination of all of these skills, yoga therapy, wellness coaching, uh, positive psychology, somatic therapy. And I, I meet each client where they are. You know, they may have been had a loss uh, 10 years ago or they may have had a loss 10 days ago, and every every client is different. So I'm very fortunate, very grateful that I have these skills to mesh together and really be able to provide a helping hand to people who are deep in grief. Well, let's talk about that. Um, let's get to some of the nuances. Uh, Some is experiencing uh, grief. And I know from all the conversations that I have that that looks different depending on the person and that's okay but still there's a process and there's a process of healing can you talk to me a little bit about what that process may look like sure in in my case or uh, my personal experience and then my experience working with people in grief one of the most difficult things is how hard they are on themselves how hard we are on ourselves so you're shooting on yourself, especially when it comes to suicide loss, the guilt and the shame of not being able to stop it, uh, not knowing, you know, oftentimes people don't even know the suicide's coming, they have no warning. And so along with the missing of your loved one, you are beating yourself up hmm. to because you didn't stop this thing from happening. And so I oftentimes start our sessions together with a little bit of self-compassion and some understanding of the value of acceptance. What's happened has happened. And the, the more, and maybe that can only happen for a second. You know, you have a second of acceptance and then, you know, the other 59 seconds in the minute are beating up on yourself and wishing you could change the past. But if you can just expand that a little bit at a time, and get to the point where you can forgive yourself and feel forgiveness, maybe even for your uh, loved one who died by suicide. That's that's some really deep healing. And it's hard to get there, but it's very worth the work. I, I know talking with other people who who either coach or provide therapy in this realm, there's a lot of grief, regret anger, frustration, all those mix of emotions. Um, how do you help people with the emotional impact 
of of dealing with the experience? Well, again, it, you know, it's so personal. It depends. So say a client is in their, uh, just the depression, right? They can't get out of bed. They don't want to move. They can't do anything. Well, then there's some breathing techniques, some, some meditation techniques, and some incremental, the, the coaching, uh, finding their self-efficacy. What can you do? Maybe you're only laying in bed, but there's a lot of things you can do. You, you're breathing. I, I love to joke around about, well, when they say my life is over, I'm like, well, your toenails are still growing. You know, there's still life. So bring the attention to the fact that the heart is beating, the, the lungs are breathing, the hair is growing, you know, whatever it is to try to get the person to understand that life is continuing to happen. And then there's the other side of the, the coin, which is if people are very anxious and can't sit still and, you know, have a, a very high functioning or I shouldn't say functioning. Brene Brown calls it overdoing um, after a, a loss. Some mm -hmm. people bounce that way and then they feel very out of control. And so the, to, to bring them back into their bodies with some somatic sensory uh practices again meditation and mindfulness practices and because I'm a holistic grief coach I talk about sleep I talk about uh diet um I talk about movement you know all of the things that our body needs because if we can physically help ourselves to feel better then that can help with all of the emotions and the other thing I want to say in answer to your question about emotions that I have found very useful in my practice, uh, the feedback I get is when people understand emotions are just a state, like a weather pattern, it's going to come and it's going to go. And there's no emotion that, that is permanent. So observing right now, I am angry. Changing that to, I am experiencing anger and I know it will change can disempower these emotions that we feel like are running our lives. I like that insight. I wanted to talk to you also about um, having people to support you or uh, cheering you on or helping you along the journey. But before I do that, I want to go back to something you said as part of the holistic nature of healing. And you talked about the physical body and the food that we eat and the other physical aspects, how important is it to, to maintain a, a diet or to eat or to regain control over your life in that way? I've never really thought about it from that perspective. Well, so another training we haven't talked about, I, I have a lot of trainings, um, is my training in Ayurveda. So I'm, I'm a certified Ayurvedic lifestyle coach as well, or lifestyle educator. And Ayurveda was the the original medicine you know way back like when chinese medicine was was starting out ayurveda was already established and it's the medical practice that goes with yoga very very ancient comes from southern india and now it's worldwide the thing about ayurveda is there were no pills when medicine originated right there was no pharmacy it was all food herbs and spices so we really can change our health based on our intake. And our Ayurveda uh, term is you are what you digest. So we work on supporting the digestive system and making sure based on, on your um, particular body type. And that's, I won't get into that because I could talk about that for hours. Um, based on, on your situation, what type of foods and activities can help balance because Ayurveda's uh, theory, and, and I, I agree with this, is that when you are in balance, when the body's in balance, it can heal. And I think that the body and mind are not separate. So as you need to keep all of you healthy. In, and then you can heal from most things. I mean, of course, I'm not talking about extreme disease. Uh, but if you can keep your body in balance, then you are able to support your healing 
physical, mental, emotional healing. Well, I definitely like the approach of uh, the holistic aspect of not leaving anything out because we are a mixture. We are a combination of all of that. So let's talk about the last thing, which I mentioned before, is our community. How important is mm-hmm. the right community to healing? It is so important, Keith, that I wrote an entire book just about that. <laughs> I know you brought up my books earlier. So um, I wrote a book about surviving spouse or partner suicide loss, a uh, mindful book. And that I felt wasn't enough because so much of my experience and then also the people I work with in grief is made more difficult by the people you spend time with, the people I spent time with. And it's not because they're bad people, they don't love me or anything like that. It's because they don't know what to do. People, especially in our Western society, are not educated about grief. You know, you can lose your spouse and if you work for some companies, they're expecting you to come back from bereavement leave that week or the next week. Mm -hmm. This is very uneducated. And, and just not, not conducive to healing. And so I wrote the second book is supporting a survivor of spouse or partner suicide loss, because I believe it is so important for people to learn what to do because people don't know what to do. And so this book is a companion to the first book, allowing friends and family and community to know how to be supportive, what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do. So meanwhile, not everyone has my book and not everyone's had a spouse or partner suicide loss. The important thing for people who are suffering from grief or, and other types of loss is to find a community that's supportive. And especially if everyone that you're with is also suffering from that loss, you're not at your best when you're, when you've gone through a big loss, you're, you're not able to support yourself or others. So my best advice is to get a neutral third party and a community. So neutral third party would be a counselor, a grief coach, a therapist, someone who works in grief and is educated about grief. And that's really something important Not all therapists are educated in grief. Not all counselors are educated in grief. So you have to make sure, I know it's shocking, but you have to make sure that the person that you are working with knows about grief because otherwise it can, it can make things harder, not easier. And then getting a support group is the other thing. So there's lots of online groups. If you don't have something local, some support groups could be just around your particular loss. Uh, depending on the size of city you in, you're in, or you, again, you can find it online. And I think those two things, you know, we rely on the people around us for our support on a general daily basis. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to big loss, they may not be able to provide the support we need. So, so looking for professional support and, and peer group support, I think is invaluable. Michelle? Thank you for giving us an opportunity to understand how healing should take place and what needs to happen. And so for those who are watching and listening, how can they, where are you on the web? Do you have a website? Where can we get your book? Yeah, I sure do. Uh, My website is inhabitjoy.com. And I'm on all the social media. Uh, You can find me. It's usually Michelle Ann Collins. But if you go to my website, you can find everything about me. I also have an Amazon author page. Uh, You can go to Amazon. And my two most recent books, the ones about suicide loss, are in all the bookstores. So, Cool. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for this conversation. (laughs) I do appreciate it. For those of you who are watching and listening, I'll see you next time. Take care.